Coming up on this episode, we're going accidentally undercover with Layla Rain, Allison Temple, and Kari Z. Hello, Rainbow Romance Reader. Welcome to episode 451 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of queer romance fiction. I'm Jeff, and it's great to have you here for another episode of the show. As always, this podcast is brought to you in part by our remarkable community on Patreon. If you'd like more information about what we offer to patrons, including the opportunity to ask questions to our guests, go to patreon.com slash biggayfictionpodcast. Now, before we get into the interview, I want to take a moment to tell you about my trip to the Luna Luna Amusement Park exhibit in L.A. You may remember back in episode 449, as part of the conversation about the Keith Haring biography Radiant, author Brad Gooch and I talked about Luna Luna, which was an amusement park designed by artists, including Haring, that was on display in L.A. for the first time since its debut over in Germany in 1987. I had a day job trip to L.A. in March, and not only did I get to go to Luna Luna, but I also got to go to Brad's launch event for Radiant that took place there. It was really wonderful to hear Brad talk more about the book and to get to meet him in person after such a great conversation we had for the show. Plus, I got to spend some time looking at all the amazing rides that have been so lovingly restored as part of the exhibit. In fact, part of that includes seeing some of the shipping containers they were stored in, some of the damage that some of the things took that were not able to be fixed, some things that came out of those containers looking amazing. They had this great comparison of a t-shirt that they were able to take out of the container that was in terrific condition. And in fact, they're selling some of the vintage shirts at Luna Luna. But then there was another t-shirt that had been like totally destroyed by rats or something that were in the container. So it's really such a great look at this piece of history. It's such a magical place, Luna Luna, with all of these illustrated rides and the people who are walking on stilts and some of the others that are walking around in costumes. I really had a terrific time there. I shot quite a few pictures too and took some short videos. So if you'd like a look at that for yourself, you can actually go to biggayfictionpodcast.com slash Luna and see all of it. And of course, that link will also be in the show notes. And if you happen to be in the LA area, I highly recommend you check this place out for yourself because it's really something. Currently, it will be open through May 12th. Now let's get into some romantic suspense. The Accidentally Undercover series started releasing at the end of March, and it features stories where one of the characters ends up in over their head when they're involved in some kind of caper. Could be an assassin, could be a spy, could be something else. This series is the brainchild of authors Allison Temple and Layla Rain, and once you hear the origin story behind this, you might never think of chicken wings quite the same way again. I know I haven't since I talked to them about this. Now, not only do we hear from Allison and Layla, we're also joined by Kari Z, whose entry in the series Under the Gun came out just last week. Layla, Allison, and Kari, welcome to the podcast. It's so exciting to have you here. Thanks for having us. Hello. We have a great new series to talk about with Accidentally Undercover, but as we get started, I'd like for you to each introduce yourselves so that everybody can kind of get to know you if they don't already. And as you introduce yourselves, tell us about what your latest book is that's not part of Accidentally Undercover. And Layla, we'll start with you. So I'm Layla Rain. I write LGBTQ romance and romantic suspense. This is my first book for this year. My last book last year was Over a Barrel, which is a sapphic holiday romance about two attorneys who are negotiating a contested end of year deal. And then after this book, coming up pretty quickly after, will be Best Play, which is the final novella in Marsh and Levi's Perfect Play series. So they have a very overdue wedding and a very angry son about it. So they're they're going to get married finally. <laughs> I'm Allison Temple. I write queer romance and fantasy. My last year was a quieter year release wise for me. So yeah, this year, the accidentally and it covers my first release this year. Last year, my latest release was the third book in my Pirate and Her Princess trilogy, which was a sapphic lesbian pirate trilogy that started out as like a spin on the Princess Bride and then just took on a life of its own and ate my life for five years. So yeah, I wrapped <laughs> that up last year. And yeah, moving on to new things this year. Oh my God, I can't believe I haven't read that yet. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's full of the anything. audio is really fantastic. Princess Blonde, trust 
like sapphic pirates. You had me. Okay. Yeah. It sells itself. Oh, it's on. No, that's your tagline. <laughs> really? No, perfect. I'm Kari Z, and I write queer fiction across almost every genre you can think of. And I just came out with the fourth book in my Panopolis series that is queer superheroes and supervillains kind of battling without slash falling in love. And yeah, I finally got rights back to the first three books. So I just took them back, published them, and put the fourth one out. Amazing. That's a series I need to read because I love a good superhero, supervillain book. <laughs> Sapphic yeah. Pirates, too, I have to say. You've added to my TBR and we've barely started. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. So Layla and Allison, Accidentally Undercover as a series is kind of your brainchild. Tell us a little bit about what this series is for everybody. Yeah. Allison, go ahead. I think it was kind of <laughs> your brainchild. Yeah, it's first. my fault. So <laughs> I've been publishing for five years and I started out in male, male contemporary romance. And Layla and I were buddies, but like I really thought that like that was going to be my bracket forever and ever. It was two contemporary romances. But every so often I'd be like out doing something you know, I'd be out for dinner at like a chicken wing place and watching these like Uber Eats drivers going back and forth and thinking about like how fun it would be if they were like carrying secret messages. And like, you know, if you ordered a very specific combination of sauces on your wings, like that's a code to tell people. But I don't write suspense. So I would send them to Layla and she would write back and go, stop, because she has this whole universe of books she's writing in that don't involve secret message chicken wings. But I didn't stop. I've never stopped. Can't stop, won't stop. The last one I sent her was about Bitcoin and basketball players. And like, it just, they, the bunnies well, became bunnies upon bunnies. And eventually it became clear that it was too much for Layla to write on her own. I swore up and down, I don't write suspense. These aren't for me. And so eventually we realized we were going to have to invite some people to help <laughs> offload some of these bunnies and put them out into the world where you start with these sort of mundane everyday scenarios, but then it turns out that someone's a spy and things get silly and explodey quickly. Yeah. I mean, we had a whole running Google doc for, I don't know, <laughs> at least two years where we yeah. were just putting the plot bunnies, right? And so, you know, eventually we got to the point where like, you know what, we're just going to have to bite the bullet. Allison and I clearly weren't going to be able to get through all of them. So we invited some friends like Kari and London Bell and R.L. Miller and Emma Grant to join us, each bring their own voice to this and have some fun. I mean, who doesn't love Gross Point Blank and True Lies and all those kinds of oops, I'm a spy or oops, the person I like is a spy. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun, fun trope that we wanted to play with. Please tell me that somewhere in these books, there is secret message chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that one doesn't have legs. It only has wings. And so, yeah, it oh. just never got off the ground, <laughs> unfortunately. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> funny, funny, <laughs> fun. <laughs> That's too bad because you kind of had me at secret message chicken wings there. I know. Maybe there'll be sequels, but yeah, no, I don't think the chicken wings made the final cut, unfortunately. That's a bummer. Kari, what inspired you to come into this series? So contemporary, anything is not where I gravitate when I'm writing on my own for the most part, but I write a lot with L.A. Witt, who I know you've had on your podcast before, and she is great at romantic suspense, and that's what we write together and so when Layla got in touch with us I'm like oh my god this would be amazing and then Ellie looked at her schedule and she was like you know what I am full up on hockey right now I don't have the bandwidth for this you can do it if you want to um and I said I do want to but I have no idea what to write and so I'm <laughs> writing about it I don't have secret message chicken wings to fall back on i'm just like oh my god what am i gonna do and then i found a picture of a woman who had to be in her 80s climbing down this like wrought iron fence in full like fancy clothes and a hat and i thought that looks like a spy sort of thing to do she looks like a badass and so i decided to mold her bubble and character's grandmother so she's a spy and didn't realize he was a spy the whole time he was being raised. So random inspiration <laughs> helps me figure out what to do. Yeah. So, yeah. I fell into it a bit, but I'm really happy that I got to 
fresh my wing, so to speak. I love that. Just all these little inspirations, thought bunnies that just kind of pop out when you're yeah. talking about regular people getting thrust into some of these things. Yep. Allison, you lead off the series with your book. Tell yep. us a little bit about mm -hmm. what you wrote about. It's called Under Her Roof. So it's a sapphic romance that leans, I think, more towards the mystery side than the suspense side. So it takes place up here in Canada. I live in Toronto. And it takes place in what we call cottage country up in the Muskokas north of Toronto, where, you know, the rich and famous have their cottages, you know, that most of us, my living room, you know, would be their guest room. And then it just sort of goes from there. So yeah, so Jillian, her father was a famous Canadian novelist, and he's died recently. And there's a lot of tension in the family as to who gets what and who gets to keep the house and the cottage. So she's gone up there to try and sort of put things right. But it turns out her evil conniving sister's there hosting a wine auction for the weekend with a bunch of VIPs, including Jillian's ex-girlfriend who shows up unexpectedly, maybe isn't who she says she was. And then the murders begin. I think that's, isn't that the way that like you can twist up a story? If you start running out of ideas, just throw in and then the murders begin. So that's what I did. So yeah, so it all takes place. It's like a bottle episode. It all takes place over one night. Yeah. And has a sort of knives out rich people trying to solve problems. They are completely incapable of solving on their own kind of feeling. Yeah. And by sunrise, they either have to escape or die. <laughs> That's two options. <laughs> two very binary those are, options. Those are the escape, possibilities. Die. Yeah, exactly. I love how you wrote such a tight timeline on that, too. Like, yeah, it was hours. a real challenge to keep it in that space. Yeah. You know, I mean, Layla writes, yeah, I'm familiar with Layla's suspense most of all. And like she writes these big, sprawling stories over cities and times. But I really like the challenge of keeping it. We're here. We have to figure out what's going on. There was a storm. So of course there's no power. There's no cell phones. Cell phones are like the bane of any kind of like action-y mystery kind of story because you can just Google it or call someone and go, we're in trouble. And so I had to take all of that away from them to make the story longer than a chapter kind of thing. It was fun to sort of play with it and piece it all together. And bottle episodes are great. Like television, movies, books, episodes. like... Bottle episodes are fantastic. They're some of my favorite on TV, you know, of episodes of TV. Yeah. And so like in book form, it's great too. And I, you know, you used a second chance romance trope, right? So mm -hmm. that helps, right? And moving yeah. romance yeah, along within that time frame. Yeah, so. exactly. It makes it, yeah, much more plausible than falling in love with a complete stranger over one night and going, yes, I'll run away with you. Like it, it seemed important that they needed to have some kind of previous relationship in order to make the romance fit in with everything else that's going on at the same time. Now, you know, my pain. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was going to ask how the romance worked. And of course, second chance makes so much sense because all that history they've got, they can instantly reference it back. Yes. And in this, you know, in this framework, all of that history but what do you mean you were a spy the whole time like i thought i knew who you were and now not only did our relationship not work but you weren't even telling me the truth so yeah so it adds lots of different layers and stakes to the story and some nice i imagine moments of forced proximity because they can't leave yeah. this place either literally cannot go anywhere yes <laughs> we are stuck here with all of these people i hate and a dead body it's very claustrophobic but that was intentional how was it writing suspense after you'd been giving over all these plot bunnies to Layla over the years? <laughs> I'm so glad to be rid of all of them. I mean, I'm a very lit writer. And so it was one of the reasons I kept it all in one night is because if I let it get too big, I really struggle with like keeping all of the bits together. Like I felt that just because the characters don't know what's happening, I do know what's happening. Like I'm supposed to know all of it. And so by keeping it all contained in one night, I was able to control those things a little bit better than if I'd let it spread out over a bigger geographic area over a longer time frame. I would have struggled more in a first effort anyway to like keep track of all those pieces and make sure that they all get thrown out at the right moment kind of thing. Will you come back to romantic suspense or is this going to like you you've quenched that thirst now? <laughs> One and done. The chicken wings are still out there. So, you know, never say never. Yeah, maybe one day when I find a hole in my schedule, the chicken wing story, I, you know, to be honest, I really struggled starting the story. Like I had, again, I have too many ideas. And so I had 
This one I had, it wasn't chicken wings specifically, but it was an Uber Eats kind of scenario where the driver keeps dropping off things. I had all of these other plot bunnies and it took me forever to like sit down to one. So they still exist and there's nothing to say I won't come back to them in the future. Yeah, we'll see. At least now, you know, Layla can just say, well, just go write it because you've written one now. <laughs> yeah, you can do now. it. It doesn't She's have to be me. Now. No, it's <laughs> So Kari, tell us a little bit more about your book. You gave us a little sneak peek there, but dive us in a little more on yours. Yeah, so mine is also a second chance romance. It's a little more James Bondian. My character is raised by his grandmother who was a spy. And he doesn't realize she's a spy. He just thinks she's really paranoid about home security and has a bunch of people, interns, come in and out of their lives who are really into blue locksmith. So he grows up. <laughs> They go their separate ways. He ends up working as an art restorationist and also getting a side gig cataloging people's private art collection. So he ends up in a billionaire's house in the Seychelles and happens to stumble into a, an op that's being run by his ex-boyfriend, who was one of those interns who turns out to be a spy. Oh. Only he doesn't realize he's a spy, so he gets into it with him and then breaks his cover. And then there's a shootout because my book is called Under the Gun and I can't live if I don't write explosions and gunfire. Doesn't matter what genre it is. Fantasy, I will blow something <laughs> up. Science fiction, I'm going to shoot something out of the sky. There must be fire <laughs> and hell, like hell raining down. And then things go and get worse from there. So it's a little less funny than I had intended it to be. A little more intense. But there's still some fun revelations along the way. Right. What do you mean you're a spy? You can't be serious. What do you mean my grandmother is a spy? That's bullshit. <laughs> and then, it, yeah, it sort of rolls from there. When you say grandmother is a spy, my mind immediately goes to Helen Mirren in red. My dear. <laughs> yeah. My inspiration. Absolutely. My lady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Arrange flowers and like handle those guns at the same time. You are my kind of person. Yes. All yeah. the respect to Helen Mirren. That's awesome. And then Layla, yours is in a universe we all know and love. Yeah. You don't know that. Like if someone knows Jax from Fog City, then right, they are the spy, so to speak here. Mine is one of Allison's plot bunnies in that she so had proposed, you know, what if critics from a certain well-known food critic thing, what if that was a spy's actual cover, Right. And then they were a spy and she's like, you write foodie romance and you write romantic suspense. Have fun. And it was quite <laughs> dangerous. It's like, do you really want to do this? Are you sure? And so we have February Winters, who is the main character, other main character. And she runs a restaurant called Under the Table in San Francisco. She's hired this bartender, Dylan Jacks, who's pretty awesome. And unbeknownst to February... Jax, aka Dylan Jax, is there watching out for this spy who's gone AWOL, who is using as a food critic as his cover. And so, you know, Feb's big revelation is quite funny because she, she gets thrown into the to the frying pan with all the Madigans. <laughs> it's like walks into the restaurant and oh, who are all these people? And why are you sitting with them? This is a little you don't intense have a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so it was a lot of fun getting back into Fog City, getting Jack's their story, which everyone's wanted for some time. And this seemed like a great opportunity to do that. And also have a little fun with the foodie romance too in there. So, you know, there's these, you know, my typical dish descriptions, and then there's gunfire <laughs> and explosions. And even the under the table as a restaurant name sounds very spy in and of yeah. itself. Spy, mafia, something's going on in that restaurant besides food. That's, I mean, Fab is well positioned to be put into this. You know, she's kind of snarky. Unfortunately, really not coordinated enough to be a spy. But, you know, very good at what she does. It's set at Valentine's Day. She's never done a Valentine's dinner because she's very... She's like, I'm not doing a price fix dinner. I refuse. We are not going to do this, right? And her whole thing is that like, I'm going to be a different kind of restaurant, sort of, right? And 
that's part of where the that name comes from. And then it's, okay, well, now everyone says I can't do it. So I'm going to do it. Here's my two middle fingers at you. And then it just goes off the rails, right? As to what she thought was going to happen on Valentine's Day. Now, there are other books here than the three of you that we have here. Tell us a little bit about the other books and what we're going to see from these other authors. I'll start off. So Ariel Miller has Under His Sheets, and her story is set in Spain, which is really cool. Also international locations and features a rock star, which if you know Ro, she's big into music. Yes, she is. She is. And so it's a rock star who takes a break and was also a teacher, right, in a formal life. And so falls back in being a teacher in an international school. And this guy that he hooked up with before he started shows up at the school, but pretends that he doesn't know him, that he doesn't actually speak English, like none of this stuff. And, she, you know, the character starts to put together some, what's going on? This is really weird. And it's a whole lot bigger than just everything. And I, from what I've talked to her, you know, there's some kindergarten cop kind of vibes in there, right? Like this guy in the school who gets wrapped up in everything. And then there's a real spy. And so that that's kind of what's going on in her story. I don't have M.A. Grant's title. Oh, it is under his name. Oh my God. Okay. The blurb is fantastic because talk about tropes. This one's got identical tool, which is just the perfect setup for hilarity. One of them is a spy off Doodle's thing, working with his partner, has a stupid accident and can't pull off whatever the job they're doing is. The other one is far from by material he hated competing with his brother sam just decided to stay at home it's been a very quiet life he's about to go have an adventure of his own in malta so another fabulous international location when suddenly he gets this possible phone call and he's gotta step in and help run this job and sparks fly shenanigans happen things go awry it kind of works because he's so himself and not spy tastic that no one would ever think this person would be a spy. So it really sells the job. And then from there, I think it's gonna be amazing. I think it's gonna be funny. I think it's gonna be really sort of sweet. I love books where somebody gets to paint themselves. We write about so many badasses, but it's really kind of nice to also write about people who are just normal yeah. and then it rides to the occasion. So I think it's gonna be lovely. I like the sound of that one a whole bunch for that very reason. Like somebody stepping up, you know, at a twin who's like, has to take in all that information of like, I need to behave this way. I'm supposed to know this stuff. Right. And then it's like, I am not my brother. <laughs> but he gets the job and the guy because he is himself. Right. Yeah. And then the last book in this series is Under the Radar by Lyndon Bell. I think this one's going to be really super cute. So it's part of the same universe as her Mars Fitness series, which is all very sort of contemporary nerd jock romances. And so this one takes a bit of a suspense spin on that. So Logan is the main character. He runs the juice bar at the gym and he's very much like, he can tell you everything you need to know about wheatgrass, but he is the last guy you want handling a crisis. And he's been dating this guy. He can't believe this guy's into him, but he is for the last six months. And like, things are going great for Logan until some of his friends start pointing out that he really doesn't know anything about his new boyfriend. And the running joke is that he's probably a serial killer or a spy or something like that. And then as situations begin to unfold, it becomes apparent that maybe that joke isn't quite so funny <laughs> and maybe closer to the truth than Logan ever expected. Because again, he's the wheatgrass guy. He's not the bombs and explosions kind of guy. So yeah, yeah. So it's going to be the spy rom-com you didn't know you needed. And I'm really looking forward to it. And all of these kind of have a lighter vibe to them. Except maybe Kari. She said hers went a little darker than she anticipated. But that was part of the point of the series, right? To have a little bit of a lighter romantic suspense vibe going on. Because they came from the chicken wing plot bunny. Like, I think they were always going to be a little bit silly. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun to see what everybody does with them whether they take one of the pre-existing plot bunnies or come up with something on their own like it's been fun to see 
where the silliness happens and where the lightness shines through, even in what could be a pretty serious story. Yeah, I mean, I think we wanted to lean into the true lies to the gross point blank, that kind of, and it, you know, they may be dark or not as funny because mine kind of, I'm in it to be funny and there's some funny, but I'm probably leaning toward Kari's direction as well, because it's just where things go. But, you know, there's those moments of lightness, of snarkiness, of fun. And just, but in the whole grander scheme of things, like someone who's not supposed to be in this situation, that's stuck in this situation and how do they deal with it? I like those a lot too. Like along the same lines of somebody, you know, like proving themselves and rising to the occasion of something. It's also like working your way through something you should never be involved in, you know, for whatever the reason that you have it. And then if you fall in love at the same time, awesome. (laughs) And for me, it was so different because like all of my romantic suspense, they're usually both, you know, they may not both be good guys necessarily, but it's two folks who are used to this world. So it was fun to play a different with a different character who has no idea what's going on. Like Danny kind of, you know, he's an exec. He's not in, he's not an Elia or anything or an assassin, but he was always around it. Like he, he was, you know, Q and he was the sidekick. Feb has no idea what's going on, (laughs) right? He's like, no, if I walk across the yard, I fall in a hole, right? Because that's how coordinated I am. And so yeah, that's that was fun to play with. And that brings levity and the funny and the humor with it. I think, too, one of the things that, like, from the very nature of the trope, like, you get to see, so these people are in situations they never expected to be in that they feel completely underqualified to deal with. But you do, like, it's been a lot of fun to see how everybody comes up with the ways that these people can contribute. You know, maybe February can't walk in a straight line, but she's awfully handy with a knife. And yeah, so it's been neat to see how people find a way to like bring these sort of everyday skills into this like action packed suspense kind of environment because, because yeah, because, you know, M.A. Grant's story, you know, you said like the way that he's going to win the day is not by pretending to be his brother, but by being himself. Yeah. And it's neat. And I think that brings a little bit of lightness to it is that ultimately there's this joy in like, hey, I can contribute. I can be part of this, even if, you know, I don't have spy written on my job title on the front door of the building. I just like complicated porn. So, no, a spy. <laughs> yes. Doesn't have to be a spy. Doesn't have to know how to handle a gun, but there's nothing sexier than someone who is good at, their, at what they do. Yep. So, even if it's not, by craft there are ways to let the competence shine through and i really like that yeah yeah if competency could be its own like sub trope or sub genre or something i would totally go for that as like an identifier yeah. for a book oh, yes 100 yep. percent. kari i didn't ask you when we were talking about your story but how did it feel for you to do romantic suspense without Lori? odd odd because one of our strengths is creating characters who love that banter which gives a lot of our books a little more lightness than we'll deserve honestly and so writing that without that secondary input was it was honestly a little bit hard i didn't know where i was going at times but that was kind of a discovery book for me but that's okay just put on my big girl pants and do it and I think it turned out well, regardless, which is not to say that I am not gentle with a chance to write more romantic suspense with Laura because I am and we're writing one right now. So, you know, can't give that up. I know. Oh, thank God. Makes me happy. But I was really, it was nice. It was a stretch to do this one. And I really, I appreciate the experience. Do you think you'll do more solo or are you going to try and stay in the co-writes for the romantic suspense? That is an excellent question. Right now, I've got so much stuff on my plate that this will probably be it until my own sauce message chicken wing takes over. (laughs) No, I got a lot of stuff on the plate, including more like the romantic suspense of Lori and some other books coming up. So I'm happy to have this done back there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's interesting to hear, thinking about co-writes, that 
it's a genre you only write with your co-writer because usually at least in the limited experience i have talking to other co-writers you're usually like you write something separately and then you decide to come together to write something with someone else who does the same thing so that's it's interesting how your romantic suspense before that was only in co-write yeah yeah it was kind of weird we just connected and she was already writing a lot of romantic suspense and was like do you want to do this no like if you want to edit it <laughs> but it ended up being okay and fortunately you know i was able to lean into that and now we can write romantic suspense and it's practically seamless it's and that's one of the reasons coming into this by myself was so challenging I'm like oh my god you have a built-in editor <laughs> what am i gonna do so yeah very intimidating and another reason for me to to give my brain a little break from actually having to figure this stuff out myself because for me without that assistance contemporary in general like i just bow down to people like Layla and do this and make it happen on a regular basis. because it's just like but people know when you get stuff wrong <laughs> yeah. honestly i can do whatever i want and nobody can <laughs> tell me no and if they do like they well my rules <laughs> yeah. yeah kindly suck it because i don't care whereas i, mean, I have I a dragon it's not my fault exactly <laughs> or, yeah or the pirate stuff right and you're like you know what i yeah. it's what i want but something <laughs> you write something and you set it in the city and the next thing you know somebody's sending you an email and they're like there is no apartment building on the corner of such and such you're like you're right but stop it don't tell amazon what they do <laughs> <laughs> I'll label it a mistake in my book, please. I don't want to have to fight. So it's I find contemporary very intimidating. So cheers to y'all for like embracing that because I don't know how to do it. Yeah. 18 books in on one one world, and I am like, I'm gonna mess up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even in this one with Jax, I wrote it and forgot that they were colorblind. Right. I remembered before we got to the end so I could go fix it. But I wrote some line and it reminded me, wait, I don't think they can see that color. Right. <laughs> I don't know why. Or no, I went back to read something. And then like, I will go back and read a chapter and then I'll end up reading half my book that that I liked a lot. And so then I read the, because I went and I read their stuff in Silent Night. And then I went and I started with Prince of Killers. And then I got to King Slater and I said, oh, oops, <laughs> I need to fix that. And I have series Bibles and things, but still, as you're writing, you kind of don't think. I'm like, oh, it's, they're not going to notice that that Feb's eyes are blue. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be the same color blue that other people sense because of their color blind. That's interesting because that's not really a contemporary setting problem. It's just like having a series that combines a universe of 18 books. Yeah, yeah. But I can, but the setting thing is true. There's a reason everything is, most of mine is North Carolina and San Francisco because I know it well enough that generally I, I am good. <laughs> so by doing, because having done now one urban fantasy, right, it was lovely. Oh, but, I mean, you have to stick to your own rules, <laughs> your own magic, right? What those rules are, but oh man, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it's also why I ended up writing Assassins because I'm like, I can't deal with FBI rules for a bit. Can they sit over there? Create your own spy agency. That works too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is how my agency works. And the rest of you just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Do what you want. <laughs> Did you face any of these kind of same things, Allison? I mean, you've written in contemporary, but it was your first romantic suspense too. Yes and no. So, so I said I also set mine in Canada. Most of the people drove up from Toronto to Muskoka for the weekend. I've done that drive. I don't have a gigantic cottage to go to, but I've driven past them. But yeah, so I really stuck as much as I could with what I knew in terms of the spy character Amanda. 
yeah, I did have to sort of fudge the truth a little bit in terms of like, <laughs> who who exactly do you work for? Because we have spies in Canada, but like, it's not, it doesn't have the same ring as like FBI. I started Googling like who investigates financial crimes in Canada? And the answer was the CRA, which is like saying the IRS has spies, which is like, do they really? <laughs> Are um, they that exciting? <laughs> is it really can I write a whole novel and have everyone believe that this person? So yeah, so so I did have to like, when in doubt, create a task force. Like it doesn't have to be a whole agency. It can just be like, yeah, some shared knowledge and people. So yeah, so hopefully no one digs me on that too badly because yes, there are a couple task forces, and if you Google them, I promise they exist somewhere, but you may have to go like a few pages down from the top couple of results. So yeah, making things work. The biggest thing, for me, yeah, you know, Kari was saying, like, please don't email me and tell me there isn't an apartment building on that block. I did have a couple of beta readers who came back to me and were like, there's always cell reception in that part of Muskoka. <laughs> like, and I was like, but there can't be. Just there was a storm. Let's just go with it, people. But yeah. So <laughs> either you believe that, you know, you can interrupt cell service or you can't. We'll see how it goes. Well, I mean, I think with all romantic suspense, there has to be a, a suspension of disbelief. There's, Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Bond, the series doesn't exist without a whole heaping lot of suspension no. of disbelief for as many films as we have right now. That goes into it. One of my favorite things is my when we go to the movies and we watch like the latest installment of The Fast and the Furious and we're on like what the Fast and Furious 12 or something like that. And how did these people become international, like anti-terrorist they were street racers. Like, you know, they most of them didn't have jobs. How have we gone to like tanks and explosions and jumping out of airplanes? <laughs> so yeah, so there, if you can believe that these people are saving the world, you can believe that there's no cell service in Muskoka for one night. Like, I think that's, sometimes you just got to roll with it. Things happen. <laughs> Things happen. And then the murders began. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Something about the way you've described yours. I just envisioned a knives out meets clue kind of scenario well originally like i'm always thinking about it from a marketing perspective of like what's the tagline and so like lesbian pirates that's all i have to say it sells itself and originally i was going to tag this one as like knives out but queer and then i realized that benoit blanc is queer so like i can't sell it like that it's that's been done but yeah but knives out meets clue is probably pretty close it definitely has that campy side where like nobody Nobody believes any of these people are like, well, no, there are a couple of people who might actually be bloodthirsty murderers, but like a lot of these people are just, they just want to tell you that they've seen Hamilton 10 times because they think it makes them sound cool. So yeah, I have a lot of fun sort of poking at how ridiculous people can be even in life and death situations. Like everyone copes differently. And sometimes the best solution is just to open another bottle of very expensive wine. <laughs> So how do these books come out? When are readers going to find them? Tell us everything. Yeah. So Under Her Roof kicks it off on March 26th. So they come out every Tuesday for six weeks, starting on March 26th. They're going to be on Kindle Unlimited. So KU readers, you can grab your copies there and uh, yeah, they'll be quick. They're all relatively novella to like very short novel length. So they should be, you know, if anyone's really keen on keeping up with the series, we tried to make sure that it was something you could get through in a week and be ready for the next installment when it comes out a week later. Awesome. Yeah. Springtime romantic suspense. Exactly. Yeah. They're all standalone. So you don't, it's, you're ready for the next one, but you didn't have to read one or finish one to jump into the next necessarily. So they just share that same common trope. And you don't have to remember the stuff either. Like you don't have to remember a plot point in one <laughs> no. book to carry it to the other one. <laughs> no, Correct. it's a different task force every time. So you don't have to remember the other <laughs> chart or anything like that. <laughs> That is awesome. So before we let y'all go, you know, we've got to get some recommendations because we love our recommendations on the show. You've already given me some, you know, as we started with what you were talking about. What have you been reading or watching recently that our listeners should maybe go check out? I feel like I'm perennially behind when it comes to keeping up with what is coming out and what is really good. And I have only just fallen into the sea drama hole, which sounds terrible. I've only just been turned on to sea drama. And so currently I'm watching a show called Nirvana in Fire, which is incredibly <laughs> shippable and also takes place in a mis like mythological ancient China and is 
super amazing. And in that vein, I'm reading a bunch of stuff by the same person who is the writer behind The Untamed, who's on Netflix for a while. And then Sunday, I'm going to watch The Last Samurai because I need explosions. And they promised to give me them in that show. So, yeah, I'm super behind in all of my fabulous stuff. I am the slowest reader on the planet, so I'm also usually a couple of years behind, but I'm currently listening to the audiobook for a YA sapphic horror novel called My Dearest Darkest that's set at a music academy in Maine. So far, it's delightfully spooky. Yeah. And then on the TV side of things, I am a long time, Layla's been a long suffering listener to my obsession with Korean dramas. So when you're done with the C dramas, Kari, I will uh, send you some recommendations for Korean dramas. Currently rewatching Alchemy of Souls, which if you like sort of fantasy and magic and big feelings, that one's really excellent. And Layla, what's been on your list lately? So watching wise, Slow Horses on Apple TV, it's fantastic spies well <laughs> i mean am i sick and so watch that and then reacher the new season that had just dropped so we had we binged watched through that i thought it was a lot of football a lot of basketball this is now the time of the year where the carolina tar heel and me starts to pay attention as we transition from one sport to the other and then reading so i can't read romantic suspense when i'm writing it i have to read outside the genre that i'm currently writing so i binge read riley nash's Earth, water, air, it's the Elements series, Elemental series. The first one was Hold Me Under, and I read it and loved it and just read the whole series. They did a great job with it. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Lots of TBR loading up. We talked a little bit about, for a couple of you, about what was coming next, but I do want to circle back to that so everybody kind of knows what is next for you after the accidentally undercover stuff comes out. So Layla, back to you to kick us off on what we can look forward to in the rest of the year. Yeah, it's kind of a romantic suspense bonanza for me this year after a little sojourn away from it last year. So Best Play will come out in June and that is Marsh and Levi's book four. And then similar to Kari, I got some rights back for Agents Irish and Whiskey and there is a new book coming out in August. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Angel Share. It'll be out in August. And then book two of my Soul to Find Urban Fantasy series will be out in October. Amazing. Lots of good stuff there. Lots of good stuff. Kari, how about you? So more romantic spend. I've got the book is called Manner of Death, and I'm doing it with Lori. And we are just about to finish the murders. So hopefully we'll be wrapping that one up pretty soon. I don't know exactly when it'll come out. And then she started to be shared the universe for Hockey. I don't watch Hockey. <laughs> I've never watched Hockey. I never thought I'd watch, like, write on Hockey book. But it turns out, <laughs> like last time, you don't have to know anything about Hockey when your co-author knows stuff about Hockey. So I'm going to write an MMA fighter which is something i know a lot more about and she's got the hockey player and it's gonna work out just fine <laughs> i'm telling i'm like i'm insistent that it's gonna work out just fine and then i'm also writing a prequel to a fantasy poly trilogy that i put out last year that did really well the triad series and i have a prequel that's gonna be coming out sometime at the end of the summer probably. And Allison, what's on your calendar? So my next release, I'm pretty sure I'll be allowed to talk about by the time this episode comes out. My next release is part of a shared series called the Subpar Superheroes. So yeah, so for the superhero fans in the group, this is that, but but with a sort of campy spin. So these are truly subpar superheroes. They're the people whose powers didn't get them into the Avengers. So they're stuck working for an agency called Spam, where they put their powers to the best use they can, even if it's, you know, charming people in line at the grocery store. So my installment in that series comes out June 6th, I believe. It's called My Not-So-Super-Blind Date, where the son of the world's greatest superhero gets stuck 
in a time loop on a blind date with a henchman for the local crime boss. Uh And one of them has to die every time they reset the day. So they have to figure out a way to get out of that. So I'm really excited. I actually wrote this book back in like 2020 and it had been sitting on my shelf. And then when I heard about this shared world, I was like, that's why I didn't publish it. It's been waiting. So yeah, so that's out in June. And then, so a lot of shared series in the first part of the year. And then in the fall, I'm starting a new solo series called Afterlife Incorporated, which will be my first venture into urban fantasy. The first book is called Only Mostly Dead and features a Grim Reaper and a ghost solving adventures here in Toronto. Yeah, so that should be, I don't have a firm date for that, but I'm hoping to have it done in time for spooky season because that would fit nicely. And uh, yeah, and there'll be a couple more of those in 2025. That all sounds amazing. We're going to link up to all the books we talked about. If any of these pre-orders are out there, we'll link up to those too. And wish you a lot of fun and success with Accidentally Undercover. I think that's going to be a lot of fun for people to start reading. Thank you so much for being here to talk to us about it. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much for having us. This episode's transcript has been brought to you by our community on Patreon. If you'd like to read the conversation for yourself, check out the show notes page for this episode at BigGayFictionPodcast.com. We've got links there to everything that has been talked about in this episode. And thanks so much to Allison, Layla, and Kari for coming to talk to us about the Accidentally Undercover series. Every one of these books sounds so good and perfect for some springtime reading. All right, I think that's going to do it for now. Coming up next on Monday, April 22nd, we're going to the theater as Adib Coram joins us to talk about his new young adult romance, The Breakup Lists. I enjoyed this book so much with its high school musical sort of vibe as a theater kid and a jock find their way to a happily ever after among so much high school drama. It's really a fun conversation. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that you'll come back here soon for more discussions about the kinds of stories we all love, the big gay fiction kind. Until then, keep turning those pages and keep reading. Big Gay Fiction Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more shows you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Original theme music by Daryl Banner.